Hello everyone. So welcome back to your own channel that is we are in techno world. So in today's video, I'm just going to tell you about FC FS algorithm, right? So uh, like in the last lecture, we have discussed about process management. So in case of process management, like we would learn like how the operating system works with number of algorithms in case of process management wherever the operating system is dealing with different number of processes. Just like uh, we are saying that operating system is dealing with multitasking environment, right? Because in today's world, like we are working on multiple tasks, right? So the tasks are known as the processes, right? For example, you could say that on one process, we are working on just like in MS Word document, Right. In the second example or in the second task, you could say that you want to print the document. Right. So this is one another process. Then the third process could be that like you want to work uh, on code block to write one C++ program. Right. So these are the three tasks. And just like that, we could open number of tasks onto our computer system. Right. So. In like uh, today's uh, operating system, we are having a multi-processing environment. So in case of this FCFS, I want to tell you that how exactly the operating system is working with multiple tasks, right? So for that purpose, I'm just going to tell you the first and the very easy algorithm that is FCFS, right? But after this algorithm, after understanding this algorithm, I would tell you some of the other algorithms, just like the shortest job first algorithm, round robin scheduling algorithm, just like that, right? But in today's video, the main focus would be on FCFS, right? So first of all, you just check this question, okay? In which, like this is example number one, and I would tell you, three example like regarding this FCFS I would tell you three examples like with different different like uh, you could say the like different uh, types of examples right would be discussed right so this is the first type of FCFS in case of this FCFS like the question is given that consider the following set of four processes right so four processes are given over here that is P0 P1, P2, and P3. These are the four set of processes, right? Now, in case of this, the arrival time and the execution time is given, right? So in each and every question, the arrival time and the execution time would be given, right? Like arrival time means when the process has been arrived, okay? When the process has been arrived, arrived means like when the user has started the process, right? So this is the time, right? This is the time. Like at what time the user has started the different, different processes into your computer system, right? After that, like what has been given? That is the execution time, right? Which is also known as burst time, okay? Burst time is the execution time, the total execution time. Okay, so in case of this, we could say that this is the execution time of different different processes, right? So if you want to check the execution time for P0, okay, so the execution time for P0 is 10, okay? It has been arrived at 0th quantum of time and it has taken like the total time that is 10, okay? After that, like P1 process has been arrived, okay? And after that, like it is taking the total execution that is 6, okay? So just like that, the execution time of each and every process is given over here, right? Now, like with the help of FCFS algorithm, first of all, you have to draw the GAN chart, okay? First of all, you have to draw the GAN chart because with the help of GAN chart, we would be able we would be able to write the completion time and to find the turnaround time as well as to count the waiting time, right? 
Now the question arises that how to draw this gain chart, right? So you just have a look. In case of this gain chart, what do you have to do? Like how to draw gain chart? First of all, I just check gain chart. Okay. So for drawing this gain chart, first of all, you just check like uh, at what time the process is being started and which process is arriving first. So if you just check this arrival time then process P0 is arriving at 0th quantum of time, right? So that is why we would write over here that is P0, okay? Because P0 has been arrived at 0th quantum of time. And now we would check that how much execution time it has been taken, right? So it is taking 10 quantum of time, right? So that is why we would write over here that is 10, right? Now we would check like between this 0 to 10, between this 0 to 10, how many processes has been arrived, okay? So you could check that between this 0 to 10, our process number P1 has been arrived, right? Process number P2 has been arrived, even though process number P3 has been arrived, okay? And these three processes, these three processes are waiting in a ready queue okay these three processes has been arrived till then the process p1 is being executed right because cpu is engaged with this p0 okay the cpu is given to this p0 right now like these three processes has already been arrived right what is the meaning of that like the user has already opened process number p1 p2 and p3 into the computer system Right? Now these three processes are waiting into the ready queue. Right? So in the next lecture I would tell you that what are the different different states of processes. Right? Because then you could uh, like understand that how many processes or how many states we are having in case of a process. Right? For example you are saying that um, uh, we are just opening a process. So that would be the new state. Then if the process uh, like is prepared now. Right? That means each and everything is ready, the devices are ready, that means the process is in the ready state. Okay, then after that the execution state would come. Right, so these are the different, different uh, states of a process. So I'm just telling you that this is the ready state. Why? Because these three processes has already been opened within this quantum of time till then the process P0 is being executed. Right, so between this time these three processes has been arrived. So that means after the execution of this P0, right, first come first serve say, like first of all the process which has been arrived first, that only or that process would execute first, right. So that means the next process which has been arrived is P1, right. So that is why the second process would be P1. Okay, and how much execution time it is just uh, like taking? So the execution time which the P1 is taking is 6, right? So we would add 6 with this 10. So it would be 16. Okay, that means the P1 process has been ended with 16. Okay, after that the next process has been arrived that is P2. Okay, so we would write P2 over here. And how much execution time this P2 is taking? That is 2. Okay. So this 2 would be added with this execution time of P2, uh, P1. That is 16 plus 2 it would be. And it would be 18. Right. After that, we would check. It would be 10. After that, 16 plus 2. That means 18. Right. After that, the process P3 would arrive. And this P3 is taking... The total execution time that is 4. So that means it would be 22. Right. So this is what? This is the completion time. Means with the help of this gain chart we could write the completion time. Right. So you just write with the help of this like P0. How much completion time the P0 is having? So P0 is completing the task at 10th quantum of time. So we would write 10 over here. Then P1 process is being ended or completely executed at 16th, 
right after that the p2 is being added at 18th quantum of time then after that p3 is being added at 22 right so this is how we just find out the completion time in case of fcfs right first come first serve right jo pehle aayega that would be executed first okay after that like uh, after finding out this completion time we could check out like how to find this turnaround time right so to finding out this turnaround time we are having one formula so what is the formula the formula for turnaround time is the completion time minus the arrival time right completion time minus arrival time so what is the completion time of process P1, P0 that is 10. So it would be 10 minus the arrival time that is 0. So it would be 10. Okay. After that the next completion time of process P1 that is 16. So 16 minus 1 it would be 15. It would be 15. Right. Then the turnaround time for process P2. So 18 minus 3 it would be 15 right after that like we are having the next process that is process p3 so 22 minus 5 it would be 17 so directly you could write okay so this is the turnaround time after that the question is how to find the waiting time so to finding out the waiting time we are having the another formula that is turnaround time minus the execution time. Okay, even though you could say the burst time. So, turnaround time minus execution time, right? So, it would be like turnaround time is 10, 10 minus 10, it would be 0. So, that means process P0 is executing first right so there is no waiting time for process p0 there is no waiting time p0 is not waiting for the cpu it is directly being executed as soon as it has been arrived so directly the cpu would be given it to this process right after that just find out the waiting time for process p1 so it would be 15 minus the execution time so it would be 9 right so this is the waiting time for process p1 okay then find out the like waiting time for process p2 so it would be 15 minus 2 so the answer would be or the waiting time would be 13th right so that means the process p2 is waiting for the cpu for this much time right then in case of p3 it is waiting for the cpu for how much time 13 right so this is what this is the total like the, this is the waiting time for each and every process right so uh, what do you have to do with the help of this example you have to find out the completion time which has been done right then you have to find out the turnaround time which has been find out then you have to find out the waiting time. So it has also been done. Right. And already we have drawn the Gantt chart. So I hope you have understood this FCFS algorithm. Right. So in the next example we would discuss like uh, how we could execute this FS, uh, FCFS algorithm for other examples. So till then watch this video very carefully and do implement or you could say like Try to solve this type of numericals into a notebook and if there would be any kind of problem, please let me know by like doing comment in the comment box, right? And don't forget to like this video. So till then, thank you. Thank you so much.